Hi guys, and welcome to this fourth uh, video tutorial uh, on how to build a short visualization tool. Uh, so like in the other videos, you can find this Excel uh, workbook uh, in the description under the video. Uh, so let's just jump right into it. Uh, so in the last video, we created this sheet, uh, the actual visualization sheet. Uh, so last video was mostly about graphics and design and creating lists. So you can choose players here. And in this video, we want to do the actual shot plots. So down here, we want to add an ice rink and plot the shots on. So in order to do that, we'll just need to do a few calculations here in the shot event table. So firstly, this one will just delete. Okay, so the first thing I'll do is I'll just add a few things. We actually don't need this to do the shot plots, but we'll need it later on. So I'll just add a few columns and talk about it later. Okay, so this is just a way to uh, have the table tell us if a shot is a goal or not, if a shot attempt is a shot on or not, if a shot attempt is a Fenwick or not. Uh, so this is something we'll need later on, but it's very easy to do. So we'll just write in a if formula. So if type is equal to goal, then it's a one, otherwise it's a zero. And then for shorts, we want to have both Shots on goal, and we want to have goals included in the shot category. So we'll just say if or it's a goal or it's a shot, then it's a one, otherwise, it's a zero. And we'll do the same with Benwick, we'll just add shot misses. So we'll just say type is equal to miss. And finally, we'll add short blocks as well. Just like that. So in this case, you see that. Uh, all the shot attempts are courses, of course. So this will just be one all the way down. Now, if you track other things than just shot attempts, you would have some zeros along the way. Uh, but I don't want to talk more about this. I'll just use them for the next video. Now, what we actually need for our shot plot to work is we need to have some conditions here. Uh, so I'll just call the first column condition. I don't know. There's probably a better name for it. Uh, so what we want in this column is we want to know if these four conditions are met or not. So if the date is correct, if the period is correct, if the shot type is correct, if the strength is correct, it's a one, otherwise it's a zero. So that's what we want this column to do. Then we also want a column that's called individual. So in this column, we want to know if the selected player, in this case, Brock again, is also the shooter. If that's the case, it should be a one, otherwise it should be a zero. And finally, we'll add a on ice condition. So here we want to know if the selected player is on the ice for the shot event. Uh, and if that's the case, it's a one, otherwise it's a zero. Okay, so we'll just calculate these real quick. Uh, 
So here we need to use the if or function. But we'll just say the first condition is the date. So we'll test if this date is equal to this date and just uh, lock the reference or if this date is equal to all. Uh, so you can select all in the list and then it should also be correct. So if that's the case, then it's a one, otherwise it's a zero. Okay, so that's the first condition, but we want a total of four conditions. So we'll just create a new if or formula. So if this one is equal to all, or this one is equal to um, period, then it's a one, otherwise it's a zero. And then we'll create the third condition, if all, and that's the shop type is equal to the, we'll call it event type here, but it's the same, or the event type is equal to all, then it's a one, and we need a bracket here, one or a zero. And then the final condition is if or the strength is equal to all, or the strength is equal to the strength here, then it's a one, otherwise it's a zero. We'll just try and calculate that real quick. Uh, so you can see the conditions are met all the way down here. We could try and change it to only include second period shots. Now it's zeros and we should see here that this should be a second period shot, exactly. So this works. So now we have a column that calculates whether or not the conditions are met. Okay, so the next thing we need to know is to look up whether or not the selected player is also the shooter. So that's really simple. So just say if the shooter, the player here, is equal to the number of the player then it's a one otherwise it's a zero and we can see here that Brockman again took the third shot of the game and he has number 23 which matches so it's correct and finally we need to look up whether or not Brockman again is on the ice so we can do that with the if or function. So if the first player on the ice for Pittsburgh is equal to the number of the selected player, or, and we'll just copy or copy this because we need the same any number of times. Okay, so we'll just do the same for the second Pittsburgh player and the third Pittsburgh player and the fourth and fifth and then in the last one I'll just put in the goaltender. So this means that if you select the goaltender it will show up as 
him being on the ice for all the shots where he's in the net. So yeah, so that's it. And if these conditions are met, it's a one. Otherwise, it's a zero. So basically, we're just looking up the number of the player and seeing if it matches this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, or the goaltender number. And we can see here that there are two shots, number 23, that's Brock game, so it's correct. Okay, so now we have the conditions in place and we are actually ready to start uh, creating the short plots. So we want to uh, build three series. We want to have a series of individual shots. We want a series of on ice shots against, and we want a series of on ice shots for. So we'll just start off with the individual shots. And I'll just create this next to the table. So we want the coordinates, the x and the y. Uh, and then we want the same for on ice 4, x and y, and on ice against x and y. So this is what we are interested in. So it's actually quite easy to find all the shots that are that are meeting our conditions. So we'll just here we'll use the filter function and the what we are interested in is the shot number uh, because we'll use that to find the coordinates afterwards. But we need to look up the shot numbers where Brock McGinn is the shooter. Okay, so that's what we want. Uh, and we want to include all shots where the condition is met and all shots where Brock McGinn is the shooter. So how we do that is we'll just write in a few if functions here. So if condition is equal to one, then it's a one, otherwise it's a zero. Multiplied by if individual is equal to one, then it's a one, otherwise it's a zero. Uh, so by multiplying them, it means that both these conditions has to be met in order to look up the shot number. Uh, and if there are no individual shots, we'll just say if it's empty we'll just leave it empty so that's it and it looks up the shots where Brock McGinn is the shooter and it looks up the shot number so you can see at the third shot Brock McGinn is the shooter the 60th shots down here Brock McGinn is the shooter uh, so that was quite easy to so we'll do the same but looking up whenever Brock McGinn is on the ice on shots for Pittsburgh. So we'll just change this one to on ice and we'll add one third condition here. So if the team shooting is Pittsburgh, then it's a one, otherwise it's a zero. Okay. So that was quite easy to do. So now we got all the shots where Brock McGinn is on the ice and Pittsburgh is the one, there's the team taking the shot. So Finally, we'll do the third filter, just with the on ice against. Uh, 
And all we have to change is we have to change. So now we're not interested in the shots where Pittsburgh is the shooting team, but we're interested in shots where Pittsburgh is not the shooting team. Uh, so we can just say if Pittsburgh is a shooter, then it's a zero. If Pittsburgh is not the shooting team, then it's a one. So now we have all this sh shot information we need. So we just need to look up the coordinates. And to do that, we can just use the xlookup function. So we'll look up the shot number. And we'll look it up in the shot number column. And we'll return the x coordinate. And if we can't find it, instead of leaving it blank, we'll put in 300. So why are we doing this? That's because when we are going to plot the shots in our graph, then it's just easier to, instead of leaving it blank, because a blank plot would plot in the middle at 0, 0.0, uh, so it would be in the center eyes. So it's easier to just put it outside of the graph. So 300 is not uh, within the ice surface. So that's why we put in 300. Okay, hope that makes sense. We'll just do the same for the y coordinate. And then we can just copy this. I don't, you don't need this many, but just make 100. We won't have 100 individual shots, but it doesn't matter. And we can do the same here. And put in, let's say, 200 something. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's plenty of shots. And finally, we could do the same. And my image is in the way. We can do the same for the on ice against shots. So now we have all the data we need. We just need to plot them in a scatter plot. So here we'll just. No. Here we'll just add a scatter plot. Very simply. Just increase the size. And now we can put in the data. So we'll just add a series called individual. And the x values are just these. The y values. And we'll add a on ice 4 series. Look up the x values. Got them here. Look up the y values. Got this here. And finally, we'll add the last series on lines against. Look up the x values. And my video is in the way. Let's move this. Look up the y values. Got them here. And that's it. So now we can just look at the plot here. 
real quick. So all of this is within the ice rink. And then you got a plot up here. That's the 300, 300 uh, coordinate. Uh, so we'll just add legend real quick. And I want this to be in the bottom like that. Okay. So the first thing we need is to, we need to adjust the size of the graph here. So we know that the NHL rink is uh, minus 42.5. And plus 42.5. So the NHL rink is 85 feet wide. And on the x axis, it's minus 100 to plus 100 uh, because we know the ice rink is 200 feet long. Okay. So now we have all the plots here looking correctly. Um, but there's no ice rink here. So the first thing we can do is we can just remove the axes. We don't need them. And we can remove the grid lines. So you say no lines. Remove the grid lines. We'll make this a little bit larger. And then we need to change the background of the plot area. But that's quite easy to do. You just go to fill picture or texture insert a picture source from file and i have them in here there's a full ring here so this ring is just taken from the short plotter i just printed this screen and cropped it uh, as close to the ring as i could so that's where I got the ring from. You can do that yourself. But let's just go back here. So now we have a ring with shots plotted on it. We could just make the plot area all the way to the side. Could even make it a bit larger down here, I think. Yeah, like that. And there's a bit of a problem because you can't see any of the individual shots. That's because uh, the on ice four shots has priority above. So they will just show them on top of the individual shots. So you can't see the individual shots. So to change that, we need to change the order here. Uh, so we could move against all the way to the top and move individual to the bottom. That means it has top priority. So now you can see the individual shots here, but they are still very, very small. So we'll just like to change the marker I'm not interested in a, any border but we're interested in the marker making it larger i'm going with the 11 here you could make it smaller or larger and i'll just move my video here um, and the color i like shots against to be red And we'll do the same with the individual shots. We will make them yellow, no border. 
and make it larger. And finally, the on ice shots for. It's not selecting the entire series. Yeah, like that. So, no borderline, and these will be blue and larger. Okay, so you could even change the shape of the plot, you could make them triangles if you prefer, or something other entirely. But I'm just going with the circles. Okay. So that's pretty much it. Now we have all the shots plotted. We could just real quickly just remove the border. Uh, and it should work like a charm. So if we change the player, we should see all shots where Dantan Heinen is on the ice. We could change the periods. Looking only on first period shots, third period shots, and so on. We could look at where are the goals coming from. So there's just one goal with Heinen on the ice, and that was actually Heinen scoring. Uh, or we could even change the string state. No shots on the box play, no one shot on the power play. Uh, so that's it. Uh, if you select Tristan Jerry here, it will show all the shots where Jerry is on the in net. So it's actually the same as uh, all team shots uh, because Jerry played the entire game. Mm. All right, I think that's it for this video. So I'll just say adieu. See you in the next one.